Hello everyone, I'm Reza Tangesani and in this video I'm going to talk about the explicit models and this is the second part for creating faster explicit models. Okay, as I mentioned before, please download the CAA file from our website as, uh, and you can find the link from the caption so you can have a better understanding. The first part, we talk about the introduction and we talk about the explicit and implicit models. Uh, we talk about the difference between these two type of models. And we talk about the two important methods to make models with less in computational time. If you remember, we talk about changing the step time and we said that we can use the shorter step time for creating model. And now we're going to explain it more. So first of all, how we can decrease time step in our model. Okay. If you remember, we talked about the increment time in explicit models and we said it is dependent on the element size and speed sound in material. So the increment size is dependent on density, young modulus and element size as you can see in here. So increment time would not decrease or increase during the solving process. So it's not like implicit model that the increment time would increase. So if you don't like to change your material or element size, you need to change your step time. To help you to have a better understanding, for example, you have have a step time about 10 seconds and based on that formula your increment time would be 0.1 so you need about 100 increments to solve this model so you have two options to make the model faster first of all is using larger increment time we talked about it in our first video it was mass scaling so by this per, uh, method we can use larger increment time for example 0.2 and we're gonna have 50 increment the model would be solved twice faster but there is another approach which is decreasing the step time for example we don't change the increment time as you can see 0.1 is still here but we decrease the step time to half so it is for example five seconds in here so we need 50 increment for solving this model just there is important note that i like to mention that uh, material properties should not depend on time such as a strain and etc for example in if in your material property if you have a strain rate property which is dependent on the speed of the process this change would may, uh, have significant effect on your results and also you need to be care more careful on your bond decoration and your applied load for example if you are standing on the impact of the bullet on the plane you, and you define the, the velocity as one meter per second if your step time is 10 seconds the bullet would uh, travel for 10 meter but if you change the into a step time to five seconds during this process your bullet would travel for five meter you need to be careful if your velocity is constant, changing the step time would affect the distance for a bullet that is traveling. But on the other hand, if you keep your uh, if you are defining a boundary condition for your bullet to travel for a specific distance, for example, 10 meter, by changing your step, it means that you're changing your velocity. So you need, you need to be more careful about it. We already created a model. For example, in this model, you can see the results without using mass scaling and without changing the step time. And you, you can see it's very smooth and uh, the starting and the ending point of the inner energy is smooth. And here, we decrease step time and still you can see the step time is smooth. Uh, we used five times smaller step time for this model and it makes our model to be solved two times faster. But there is an important point that we need to consider. In this model, we didn't have the material properties such as a strain rate. So decreasing the step time would not affect our results. And also, you already have the INP file so you can compare your results with the other model. You can run both models and then you can compare the model. Now we are ready to go for the model. Here's the model, as you can see, everything is already defined. We already talked about it in the first video. In here, the only diff change you might need to do is going to a step time and changing this value to 0.1, which is about five times smaller step time. And if you go to increment and the mass scaling, you, you already see that nothing has been defined in mass scaling. And here we go to load and here on tools, we go to amplitude manager and then here we need to change the smooth step for here we need to change this value to 0.1 so the defined boundary condition would be implemented in 0.1 as you can see in here which uh, use the amp dash one okay and there is one important point that i would like to mention is that they, when you go to amplitude and you de defining the table you have tabular equality space and a, sm a smooth step 
So for explicit model, I highly recommend you to use SmoothSA, which is very good for having more accurate results. By using tabular and a quality space table, by, by using these two options, you would not have a smooth diagram for your inner energy, as I explained the PowerPoint slide. So the difference between these two and the smooth time is that it applied the load or your boundary condition linearly, but for a smooth step, it would smoothen your starting and your your end point of your model. So it first it goes very slow and then it accelerates and goes faster and in the end it goes smooth again. So I think it's good now. Now we can go and submit the job or job one. I'm gonna write input and then I'm gonna submit it. Okay, as you can see, the job is completed. Here is the model with larger time step, and here is the model with a smaller time step. As you can see, the value for maximum stress is 4.47 for this model, the normal model, and with the faster model, the maximum value is 484, which is about 10%. But if you want to have a better vision, we can go for here, pro value, and check the values. If you can see, the values are around. 270 something and if you do set the same for this model model with a shorter step time you can see the difference it is about 290 270 both models are good which because the stress value is about 10 percent higher than this one so it is acceptable for this model and we can say it's even less than 10 percent which is great and this model has been solved about two times faster than this model whenever we want to create a model for explicit method we probably need to use the sh shorter step time and then if we can get the results for more accuracy we can create a model with larger time also to make sure that our model both are fine we can go to here and we can we can select these two for this one and same for this one to differentiate between the uh, inner energy and the kinematic energy as you can see the difference between these two models is around 200 units so it is fine and also for both models the the starting point and the end end point of the diagram is a smooth for inner energy so and uh, and the difference between the inner energy and the kinematic energy is significant which shows that the inner energy is at least two times larger than the kinematic energy for which is good for explicit models we can understand the effect of time step for explicit model next video we're going to talk about the element size to understand the effect of the elements on an explicit model we try to make the model faster i think i explained pretty much everything until the next video bye